everybody. Dr. Friedman here. This is a short one today. Uh, I'm under the weather this week, so I'm conducting classes on Zoom and then going right back to bed. Uh, but luckily, I have a week full of amazing class visitors who have kept up the energy and the information for our students. And of course, it's always nice when we can all see each other face to face. Isn't technology great? Today was Sally Heatley from the Office for Research Compliance here at Auburn. Uh, she's our first line of contact with the Institutional Research Board, or IRB. That's the group that looks at all research, including research with human subjects, um, that has any possibility of needing a safety check. Um, and that covers a whole range of things. Um, we're at the lowest level um, because we are considered of minimal risk. Um, taking our survey it poses you no more danger of harm mentally or physically than you would face walking down the street. Um, and nevertheless, um, we will submit all of our recruiting information, the wording of the survey, and the list of all of the people involved, along with a couple of forms um, to uh, be reviewed and and signed off on before we uh, disperse the survey. If you've ever done a survey online uh, that's been approved by an IRB, you will have noticed the fact that before you start filling out the survey, there's a kind of explanation of what the study is doing, who the contact person is, um, what the research is for, um, you know, what are the risks to you, if any, um, or you should if it says it's approved by an IRB. Um, and so we're going to be doing that over the next couple of weeks. It was a really interesting conversation that led to some things that I hadn't thought about in terms of, um, I mean, I knew that having subjects be 18 and over would save us a lot of headaches um, because working with minors adds a whole bunch of extra levels of risk and these sorts of things. Um, but what I didn't realize was that if we ask for demographic information, then uh, we have the possibility of screening out people who are underage who fill out our survey. Um, and then we have to throw out their results. Whether, whereas if we ask, if we don't ask an age and someone underage fills out the form, then we don't know. And so we can't do anything with what we don't know. And which is an interesting ethical challenge. And this is one of the things that kind of came up, especially near the end is, IRB is the start of research ethics. It's compliance with the law and best practices, but best practices in different fields have different levels beyond that. And one of the things that I think people who have talked to me know is that I take very seriously the idea of ongoing and continual consent um, from subjects as far as I can. Um, you know, I work at the interesting intersection between um, these kinds of research ethics, um, journalistic ethics, and then um, other kinds of humanistic basic decency, quite frankly. Um, what I liked about having Sally come to class was the fact that no matter what college these students are in, the, the research that is being conducted in those departments and colleges is also overseen by her. She's She's seen it all from all of the colleges on campus. Um, and in fact, was able to talk about the ways in which the Institutional Review Board itself also has to represent different constituencies and ways of knowing in order to comply with the appropriate guidelines. Um, so, you know, IRB is at best um, an often dry subject. Um, it's certainly uh, often understood as a hoop you have to get through, a hurdle to get over. Um, but what's really lovely about having this contact with Sally is to realize that there's a person who's learning the rules and the protocols not to beat us over the head with a stick or smack us on the wrist, but to help us make sure that we're doing good research and he was very very helpful i found sally really helpful when i have questions about the work that i'm doing and when do i need to go up for approval and these sorts of things um so it was a really great um session we're going to pair that with a talk with an actual practitioner of the study of actual play my colleague alex chalk 
um, a recent grad uh, who is now in the kind of postdoc world looking for a gig, um, but who has written a recent work on trying to do some interesting uh, work with human research subjects, with interview subjects about actual play. And what's been really lovely talking to Alex um, kind of one-on-one -on -one has been talking about this article just came out and already, as is often the case with academics, there's already things that he thinks he'll do differently in terms of methodology next time. And so I'm excited for our students to see how the sausage is made, ask disciplinary questions, and also have that conversation about, you know, how would he do things differently next time? Or what would he do differently with different kinds of skill sets available? I think it's going to be a really rich conversation. But that's all for now. Um, and I'm going to go back to bed. I hope you're having a great week. Uh, this video is probably going to come out uh, far after I am recording it, but I thought I would record it while I am got a little energy up and we could do the editing later. Um, Thanks so much. Uh, as always, I am highly online uh, on Twitter at F-R-I-E-D-E if you have questions or of course you can throw them in the comments below. Take care.